In this video I'll take a look at the Heathkit PT15 photo timer. This video doesn't really fit within my usual scope of Heathkit radio and test equipment. I picked this unit up purely for nostalgia reasons. A PT15 photo timer was the first and only Heathkit I ever built as a newly purchased kit. I'll say more about this at the end of the video. A little history to put this product in context. Photographic film developing was a popular hobby in the 1960s through 70s. With a relatively modest investment in equipment, one could develop film, at least black and white, in a home darkroom. And like many hobbies, the amount of equipment and accessories you could buy to move beyond the basics was almost limitless, especially if you wanted to develop color film. Heathkit saw home photography as a potential market and offered several products in this area. Their product line included a couple of photo timers, darkroom computers, which assisted in calculating exposure times for black and white and color film, and even a chemical processing tray for color film. This particular unit, the PT-15, is a photo timer. Part of the process of making prints involves exposing the image from the negative onto photographic paper for a specific period of time using an enlarger. While the time on the order of a few seconds can be estimated by hand, for accuracy and repeatability, many people use a timer specifically intended for the purpose. The PT-50 was sold by Heathkit as a kit at a retail price of about $29.95. Looking through old catalogs, I saw it offered from 1970 through 1976. By 1980, it had been replaced by the PT-1500, a more sophisticated microprocessor-controlled timer that was also more expensive at about $125 and more for optional accessories. The timer supports timing from 1 to 99 seconds in 1 second steps and from 0.1 to 9.9 .9 seconds in 0.1 second steps. Outlets are provided for an enlarger and a safe light, each able to control up to a 350 watt resistive load. Accuracy was stated as within 5% of the time selected and repeatable within 2%. It ran on AC power of 105 to 125 volts, taking 6 watts. It was sold only as a kit, which was relatively easy to build and came with all parts and detailed assembly instructions. The basic use of the unit is to control an enlarger, which is a type of projector that exposes photographic paper to an image before it's developed. The enlarger is plugged into an outlet on the timer, and the timer allows the user to set the exposure time and simply press a button to turn on the enlarger for the selected time. A second outlet optionally controls a safe light, which is a small red lamp which is used to provide some light for working in the dark room, but doesn't expose the film due to the color of the light. This would typically be on when the enlarger was not on, and switched off when exposing the film. Here I've connected a small lamp to the enlarger output to show the unit operating. Typical operation is to turn a unit on using the power switch, then select the desired range, either from 0 to 9.9 .9 or 0 to 99 seconds. The desired exposure time was then set using the two rotary switches. The appropriate time being calculated using tables or formulas, experience, and typically some trial and error. Normally the mode switch would be in time mode with the enlarger off and the safe light on. To adjust and focus the enlarger image before exposing film, you could set it to focus mode to turn the enlarger on for as long as desired typically to focus and adjust the size and position of the image. When ready to expose the photographic paper, pressing the start button would turn the enlarger on and the safe light off for the selected time. After which the enlarger would turn off again. You could adjust the exposure time if needed while doing some test prints. If multiple exposures used the same exposure time, the timer would allow you to accurately repeat the exposure time for each print. If for some reason you wanted to turn the enlarger off while the timer cycle is active, you can press the momentary stop switch to end the timing cycle. The large and logically placed controls made it easy to operate the unit under low light levels. The start button even glows slightly in the dark. The circuit is quite simple and uses an SCR or silicon controlled rectifier which is triggered by a neon lamp to control a relay. 
The Neo lamp is connected to an RC circuit where the resistance is controlled by the time switches. When the RC circuit charges up to the lamp firing voltage, it triggers the SCR which energizes the relay. The range switch uses 1% tolerance precision resistors in order to meet the specs for timing accuracy. To maintain consistent timing as the line voltage varies, a voltage regulator using a 0A2 gas regulator tube generates a constant 150 volts DC. When operating, the regulator tube shows a slight pink or purple glow and the neon lamp flashes when the timer fires. In all, it's quite an interesting mixture of technology, a regulator tube which doesn't get hot, a neon lamp, and a solid state device similar to a transistor, the SCR. The circuitry is wired point to point between the components and some terminal strips. While the basic circuit is quite simple, there's a significant amount of wiring to be made for the two 10 position rotary switches, relay, and other switches. Notable components here include the power outlets, timer switches, voltage regulator tube, SCR, neon lamp, relay, and trimmer pots. Due to component value variations, the unit needs to be calibrated. The sensitivity pod is adjusted to the point where the timer starts consistently every time. Then an electric clock is connected to the enlarger outlet and a lamp to the safe light outlet. The times 1.0 calibration pod is adjusted so that the timer stays on for 99 seconds when the timer is set to that value. Then the 0.1 pod is adjusted for 9.9 .9 seconds on the time 0.1 range. The calibration should be repeated from time to time to ensure maximum accuracy. The adjustment pots can be accessed from holes in the back of the unit. I couldn't resist picking this up when I saw it being offered for only $5 on Kijiji. Few people do home developing today or even use film cameras, so there's not a lot of demand for this type of equipment. It was in somewhat rough shape with some splashes of fluorescent orange paint on it and some obvious modifications, but it looked complete. It didn't come with a manual, but there are partial copies on the internet. I gave it a light cleaning and I was able to remove the orange paint with some scrubbing and hot water as it was latex based. Looking inside, it looked complete. I checked some part values and they looked fine and then slowly powered it up with a variac and made some voltage measurements. It was working fine other than needing to clean some switches with contact cleaner. A previous owner had made a few modifications. A fuse was added internally. The original two wire outlets were replaced with three wire outlets and the original two wire line cord had been replaced with a heavy duty three wire grounded cord. These are all good modifications that make the unit safer to use. The construction quality was good. The amount of wear on the case and controls is about what would be expected for a unit about 40 to 50 years old and indicates that it was probably regularly used. My introduction to Heathkit was in 1974 when my father and I shared a Christmas gift of a PT-15 darkroom timer kit. We built the kit together following the instructions in the assembly manual. Heathkit was renowned for the high quality of their manuals. Their motto was, we won't let you fail, and it was quite straightforward to put together. However, testing of the assembled unit indicated that it didn't work quite right. I made some voltage measurements with my trusty Radio Shack meter, and we made a trip to the local Heathkit store. The service technician there looked at the symptoms and voltage measurements I had made and suspected it was a faulty SCR and gave us a new part at no cost. Sure enough, after soldering in the new part, it worked flawlessly. We used that timer for a number of years. Picking up this unit brought back memories of that first teeth kit. I was actually surprised at how complex the wiring was. I don't remember finding it particularly challenging as a 14-year-old to follow the assembly manual and solder it all together on the kitchen table. I think it went together over a couple of days. The Heathkit manual suggests some other applications for this unit. Since I don't dabble in developing film anymore, I need to find another use for it, or may simply put it on display.